I write for um, whoever pays uh, for my scribblings, and that uh, ranges from Time Magazine and The Guardian, Physics World, all sorts of others. Um, I also addictively write a blog um, every day, sometimes two or three times a day, for the CBS website uh, called Smart Planet, and I write for them uh, exclusively about energy. Occasionally, I dabble in the grown-up job of writing research reports, and that's why I'm here. John Kutch and Jim Kennedy asked me to summarize my research report, Emerging Nuclear Innovations, Picking Global Winners in a Race to Reinvent Nuclear Energy. It was for uh, Kachan and Company, based in Vancouver. It came out last November, and it's an in-depth account of the uh, many nuclear alternatives, not just thorium, but also molten salt, pebble bed, modular fast neutron fusion. There's a nice section on fusion in it. Uh, and China, which uh, got its own category um, in the report. Uh, China not being a technology, obviously, but uh, uh, there's a lot going on there. And, and in case you doubt me, just ask Jim Kennedy, uh, who I think has a few thoughts on the subject. Alternative nuclear technologies, uh, such as thorium, are, are the Skype and the Google compared to big telecoms and big media of conventional nuclear. Uh, and we all know that Skype and Google have profoundly forced old media and telecom to change their ways. Uh, alternatives like uh, thorium can do the same thing to nuclear. Um, now, one note, when I researched my report last summer, uh, I called up all sorts of people. Um, and some of you are in this room and were very generous with your time. Uh, I also attempted to reach the big, I call them the big three, the big nuclear companies. So, so uh, big telecom, big media, Arriva, Westinghouse, and GEH. I went out of my way to find them, get them to talk to me about uh, how they view alternatives or the future of nuclear power. None of them, none of them would, would talk to me. The, the silence was, was profound. Uh, I was barely even getting emails back. So. Someone once described nuclear power to me as um, the most complicated way ever to boil water. Um, but my report found that there are better ways, there are better ways to boil that kettle. I discovered, during my research, I discovered people like Kirk Sorensen were the opposite of Westinghouse, GE, and Areva. They were happy to talk, and talk, <laughs> and talk. I mean, as, as, as you, I think as you all know, if you ask Kirk to tell you about thorium, well, be careful what you ask for, you might get it. But uh, seriously, Kirk is a fantastic uh, educator and ambassador for thorium, and, and it seems like I'm always stumbling across videos of him on the internet, uh, and I never tire of watching. And it's not just Kirk. Um, uh, again, like I said, uh, Canon Bryan and... and um, uh, David LeBlanc of Ottawa Valley Research, Cannon, who just spoke, they were very, very helpful. And, the, and all Kirk, Cannon, and, and um, uh, David, they're all in the report, as well as about 20 or 25 other companies. I won't go on about um, thorium much because, um, well, I, that would be preaching to the choir. I thought for this audience that it would make more sense to talk about the other Skypes and Googles. Okay, so uh, fast neutron reactors. Now there's some money in this game because um, that man on top, whose name you might recognize, he, he's in it. Terra Power and fast neutron reactors. China is into fast neutrons in a big way, and uh, just hold that thought. I'll get onto that in a second. Uh, in fact, Bill Gates was over in China um, not too long ago, and he's attempting to collaborate with them. There have been some early discussions about uh, China uh, and, and Terra Power working together. A misconception about uh, Bill Gates's traveling wave reactor, which is his version of a fast neutron reactor, is that it's, it, people think it's a modular, but it's not. Um, I interviewed their CEO for the report, John Gilliland, and, uh, and two others, and they, they made the, the point that it's, that's not their first act anyway. It will perhaps be modular down the road, but they're working on a larger reactor than modular. Uh, it'll use depleted uranium, uh, uh, and they say no reprocessing necessary, so, it, so uh, the plutonium breeds and burns in situ, and, and that's one of their big selling points. Um, you don't have to take anything out to reprocess. 
Uh, Tara says there's a 100-year supply. Uh, the machine is liquid sodium cooled. They're working with uh, Idaho US National Laboratory. And as I mentioned, uh, I misspelled casting. Uh, OK, they'll dock my pay for that. But they're casting about for deals in Russia, China, India. And India's reliance industries has, uh, I say, has since invested since the report came out. They've made a financial investment in Terra Power. But they don't think they'll have a reactor in place until uh, 2030. What about thorium? Uh, well, they say their traveling wave reactor could run on thorium, but that is not their initial idea whatsoever. They're designing it for uranium. Uh, now, General Atomics, um, you know, Terra Power, Bill Gates gets all the press on this type of machine, but General Atomics is working on one, and theirs is modular, uh, meant to be at about 240 megawatts capacity. And they're uh, designing it as much for industrial heat as they are for electricity. It's called the Energy Multiplier Module, or I don't know if it's EM2 or EM squared, but anyway, it's EM2. Uh, it will use depleted and spent fuel. And now G General Atomics uh, likes to make this big overarching statement that there's enough of uh, depleted and spent fuel around to, uh, uh, to equal 40 Saudi Arabia's worth of oil, or they said 9 trillion barrels. I, I, I did not check their math, but, uh, but um, uh, th their point is, is that they can use all this depleted and spent fuel, which uh, starts to get around the problem that Ken and Brian was just articulating about uh, running out of the uranium supply. And it you know, starts to sound uh, like a decent alternative. The fuel lasts for 30 years, operates at high temperatures, uh, helium gas cooled. It does require fuel uh, reprocessing, unlike Terra Power. But General Atomics says that theirs is better than the traveling, wa traveling wave because the fuel does not have to be reshuffled inside the, um, uh, in, inside the, the reactor. Uh, whereas Terra Power, I guess, is mechanically reshuffling the fuel around. Uh, it's deploying, it says it's uh, deploying a so-called safe reprocessing technique based on physical dry extraction rather than on chemical reprocessing. Uh, they think three to four years for basic research, ten years to complete a prototype, and all for about three billion dollars of development. Uh, and they, they think the prototype might go at the Savannah River site in South Carolina, uh, and that they could be ready uh, commercially by 2030 or 2025 at the earliest. Right now, China's building what, I think about 27 uh, conventional reactors. What I found in my research was that, uh, that conventional nuclear will level off at around 2040, and that fast neutron reactors will take over and hit uh, uh, 200 gigawatts capacity by 2050, and 1,400 gigawatts by the turn of the century. I believe those numbers came from the World Nuclear Association. Um, and they've just connected, last summer they connected a small test experimental fast reactor, and they plan to, beginning, they plan to begin building two larger scale uh, fast neutron reactors by 2013 based on Russian designs. And they'll begin a design of their own, a larger one at about a gigawatt. Uh, in 2017 to be completed by 2020. That sounds awfully fast, but, but that's, uh, that's the plan. And China National Nuclear Corp has had discussions with Terra Power about uh, uh, working with him on the traveling wave design. Pebble beds, pebble beds, they're gas-cooled. Uh, a company in South Africa called Q Power is picking up where the South African government left off. They had a big, long uh, development project that, that failed in the end. Um, uh, he, it's he, helium gas cooled. Um, could possibly use thorium, but they're focusing on uranium at the moment. Thorium is on their radar. There's a mine not far from them, uh, Rareco, Rareco mine, part of a Canadian company, Great Western Minerals. And uh, Rareco is going to start mining, uh, I believe it's monazite. Um, I'd have to double check, but they're going to start mining uh, thorium from nearby uh, where QPower is this year or next year. Uh, and QPower thinks it might build in the US where they say the Department of Energy has given some priority to gas-cooled reactors in its next generation initiative. 
Modular, lots of work going on, lots and lots of work going on in modular. I know Kirk is big on modular for thorium, but uh, I mean, this is something that the thorium industry is uh, going to have to compete against. The thorium does not have the monopoly on modular. One of the main uses for it will be, I think, for industrial heat, plus for electricity in, um, in remote regions that currently use very expensive diesel for electricity. I also like Kirk's idea of powering uh, U.S. domestic military bases with uh, uh, modular thorium reactors. And um, uh, I hope to catch up with Kirk later and find out uh, where that might stand at this point. Uh, but some other companies involved in modular, Radix, based in Long Island, New York, they're using Triga fuel, uh, which is used in a lot of research, university research labs. They're working on a 10 megawatt reactor. And and they're the ones, in my mind, who stand out with this notion of um, putting uh, modular reactors out in the front line in military combat zones. So, somebody talked earlier today, I think, about the hazards of moving uh, fuel around in Afghanistan. Uh, well, a, a modular reactor to the rescue. Um, they were hoping to get DARPA funding uh, at the time I wrote the report. And just as the report was going to print, I found out they did not get the DARPA funding. And, and that was around last November. As far as I know, uh, they're, still, they're still carrying on. Other modular companies are New Scale, Hyperion, and then Fusion is not the name of a company, but uh, is uh, obviously a technology, and we'll get more onto that in a second. Now, I said China uh, had got its own category in the report, and not just for fast neutron reactors. China could build as many as 100 reactors by 2030. Uh, that's nearly a quarter of all the commercial nuclear reactors operating in the world today. There's something like 434 of them. Uh, it's going for all sorts of nuclear. Today, nuclear is just under 2% of China's electricity, 27 reactors under construction now, all of the conventional variety, inclu well, including some of the um, passive cooling designs from Westinghouse. There are over 100 nuclear companies in China. This is one thing that made a big impression on me is how much of an industry it is there. Uh, and one company in particular, one of the over 100 companies, China Nuclear, National Nuclear Corporation, is alone investing $120 billion in nuclear through 2020. And they have uh, somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000 employees. So China's serious. Uh, Xingxiao, I think I'm saying that right, University, as an, the I, INET group, investigating various possible uses of thorium. China Academy of Sciences developing a thorium molten salt reactor. Those are both in uh, my report. And I found out yesterday, I hadn't heard of this before, but uh, Baroness Worthington, who will speak later, was mentioning to me about an accelerator style uh, thorium reactor that China is working on. Um, um, Oh, I wrote that twice. I guess it really made an impression. Okay. China has a, a pebble bed, at least one. Um, they're currently building a demonstrator at the Shidoan facility in Shandong, and they plan 18 more, each of around 210 watts capacity. Yeah, watts. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll go with megawatts. Did I really write watts, or did I just say it? I said what? I wrote watch too. Don't believe anything you read. Take it from a journalist. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, fusion. Now, here's the big question. I was really struck by this. If fusion is 30 years away, why are venture capitalists investing? VCs, uh, VCs don't go for 30-year returns. If they wait two years, they've waited an eternity, right? So. Um, uh, I'll give you some examples of VCs investing in a second, but this all says to me, it's part of why I believe that startups will get there first before the big government-funded behemoths like um, the Eater Tokamak in Cataract, France, and the National Ignition Facility uh, in Livermore, California, where their um, uh, lasers are traveling, 180 lasers or something like that are traveling a mile to get to their target about that big, and Eater's is 10-story tall. And uh, they're huge money sponges. And that's not to say that um, good scientific results won't come out of them. But, but we have several startups now going at it in an entrepreneurial fashion. And I, I, I think startups will get there before the big, the big guys. 
deuterium uh, tritium. Uh, this is what they're working on at ITER and also at NIF. Uh, ITER and NIF both have very different ways of fusing deuterium and tritium. But the idea is they fuse, neutrons come off, uh, hot neutrons come off, that heat uh, drives a turbine, generates electricity or takes uh, oil out of tar sands or whatever industrial process. Now, some uh, startups working on the same sort of thing, but in an entirely different fashion, are General Fusion of Burnaby, Canada. Uh, they've raised 32 million and their backers include Jeff Bezos of Amazon fame, and a Canadian oil company, uh, Synovus. Um, there's a lot of interest, uh, well, there is some interest anyway among the uh, oil sands or tar sands, whatever your preference, uh, companies for using uh, fusion or some sort of modular reactor as a heat source um, to get around their uh, carbon emitting means of extracting that they use today. Another uh, fusion startup is Helium Energy of Redmond, Washington. Uh, now, unconventional fusion, uh, it's called, it goes by different names, A-neutronic, and A-neutronic does not use neutrons. It just generates electricity directly. Uh, charged particles come out and that's, that's your electricity, so it eliminates turbines. Uh, we're possibly looking at a future of electricity generation uh, without, uh, from a nuclear reactor without a turbine. Uh, it does not rely on hot escaping neutrons. It tends to fuse hydrogen and boron, not deuterium and tritium. Uh, it runs much hotter than uh, conventional fusion, between one, two, one and two billion degrees. So don't get close. Uh, don't try this at home. Uh, versus uh, a reasonably cool 100 million to 150 million degrees for conventional fusion. Um, Try Alpha, uh, they're a stealth company. I think they like to be called a stealth company. It, it sort of adds to their mystique. But uh, they don't talk a lot. They, they haven't really met the press much that I'm aware of. Uh, they've raised over $140 million in venture funds, including from Goldman Sachs. And another company uh, working on the same sort of technology is called Lawrenceville Plasma Physics. They're in New Jersey. They're partnering with Iran. Uh, they've recently, just, just last week, they have formalized or, or escalated a partnership. They had an informal partnership with uh, uh, Iranian researchers, but they have signed a contract with uh, the head of the plasma research department at the Islamic Azad University in Tehran to jointly develop um, a neutronic fusion. And let's see if that gets past the uh, sanctions regulations. I think I'm about to wrap up here. Thorium challenges. Well, opponents say that thorium is not as wonderful as it's made out to be uh, in areas like proliferation. Anytime I write a blog about thorium, I, I get that remark. I, 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 there's always two or three people that write in and say, this is nonsense. Uh, thorium is, is dangerous. It can proliferate weapons. So, and I'm saying this because, um, and a few other people have mentioned it today as well, but. Uh, but this is something that if thorium is going to, um, to, to catch on, uh, the industry will have to explain this. Um, it is explaining it, it will have to continue to explain it. Uh, why mine thorium? Well, I, I'll interrupt myself here and say, well, maybe we don't have to mine it. We just heard, uh, we've heard from a few speakers today that there's a lot of it already, already out of the ground. But, but um, to go with the thought, why mine thorium when you can run reactors on spent fuel and depleted uranium? as with the fast neutron reactors that I mentioned earlier. Uh, thorium is, of course, up against renewables, fracking, conventional nuclear, including modular. Uh, China, China, China. And then China is also an opportunity. Uh, as I said, Bill Gates might be partnering there. He, his company's not the only one that mentioned to me that they're uh, possibly interested in working with China, although General Atomics was not. Um, but, of course, uh, Beware the intellectual property. And I think that's it. So, so I'm a, a journalist, and um, you're all doing good things. And if you want to tell me more about how you're saving the planet, there are some various contact details for me. OK, that's it. Thank you.